the head coach of USA men's volleyball and the United States national team, national champion player and coach as well, and one of the most likable people on the face of the planet, John Spira, with us on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline. Coach, welcome back to the show. Hey, thanks for having me, guys. Pleasure to be here. Hey, what are your plans for the 4th of July, man? Um, I'm uh, going to be playing some volleyball down in Brazil and representing the U.S. Yeah. That's what we're be doing. Yeah, we're excited about it. Uh, we're in the middle of what's called World League. It's uh, the, one of the main international tournaments uh, that goes on every summer. And uh, this, this time around, we've uh, put out an, a young group with a lot of your guys, and uh, they've done really well. And so we were, we were pretty excited to make what's called the World League Finals, which is the playoffs after the preliminary round. So that's where the finals are being held. You play France, it looks like, on July 4th. We'll break down kind of Team USA in a, in a second. But, yeah, we, we wanted to have you on because you have five BYU, either players or coaches, on your staff. Three players, <laughs> Taylor Sander, Ben Patch, Jake Langlois. And then, of course, Mike Wall, who's been with you for a while now. And Rob Nielsen right. was added. What? Why do you have five Cougars involved with Team USA in this uh, World League competition? Well, I, I think at the end of the day, they recruit well. Um, if you think about Mike and Rob, you know, years ago, Carl recruited him to come to BYU, and we all know the impact Carl's had on our game nationally here in the United States. And uh, they continue to, to build on that legacy, and, and, and Taylor and Ben and Jake, they're just another, another in a long line of BYU players we've had in this program. And uh, they're, they're, they're keeping up the tradition for BYU success here, and we're, we're fortunate to have them. What kind of impact have the three BYU players that are currently doing work for you on the court had on the current state of USA Volleyball? Well, right now, Taylor's had the biggest impact. He's been with us now for four years, right? He came out in 2014, I believe, right, was his debut. So it's been a few years. And uh, he obviously had an immediate impact. He came out and, and re he was actually MVP of World League his very first year, which was uh, – probably shocked the whole world actually <laughs> and uh and then he, of course he was a starter for us from then on out we won the world cup in 2015 and then took him to the olympics and started he started every match in the olympic games so he's he's had a an immediate impact for us and he continues to really improve like, he's had a really great world league and now even though he's only been in the program for a few years we we lost a lot of guys that, that were longtime veterans david lee reed pretty these guys uh, have been with us for a long time. So we're, we're looking for some of these younger guys to provide leadership. So he's one of those guys that we've relied on to set a lot of balls over World League, and uh, he's done a, an amazing job. For uh, Ben and Jake, it's their first time getting their feet wet with us. And uh, Jake's done real well. Jake needs to, to get a little bit better passing the ball, so he hasn't started for us. Uh, but he's he's got a lot of potential. Obviously, he's a really big guy. He's tall and as an outside hitter, you don't have always the 6'10 outside hitters, so that I think he could have a bright future for us. And then Ben has been starting for us, uh, earned the starting role during World League, and uh, has just improved at a dramatic rate. Uh, I've been really pleased with his uh, focus on learning, his open-minded. He's, he's one of these guys that's super coachable. Uh, so I, I, I've He's been unbelievable. He's uh, gotten better and better in a short amount of time and single-handedly won us some big matches as we were trying to make the finals. So I think he's got a real bright future for us. Are you cool with Ben's hair, though? I love it. I mean, listen, <laughs> <laughs> listen I, I, know I'm, I know I'm calling in and I'm not on TV here, but for those fans out there, I don't criticize anybody's hair because I think they're just lucky to have it. And, uh, that's, I, don't, I don't get into that. You, if you have it, you can do whatever you want with it. That's my policy. You mentioned Jake Langlois and, uh, you know, the needed improvement there. The fact that he's on Team USA is pretty crazy, and we've chronicled that, yeah. you know, on BOA TV the last couple of years. But the, the late, great Carl McGowan, when Jake Langlois was a freshman, I don't know if you've heard this story. Jake is on the far side, literally the dark side of the Smith Field House, where the mm -hmm. scrubs hang out, you know, while the real players play on the other side. And he, yeah. and he says, if that kid can figure it out, he could play with Team USA. And, yeah. and, and here Jake is on the World League roster. I mean, it's, it's this incredible story, the fact that he's young and developing, and this is a younger kind of group you've mentioned. But the fact that he's with Team USA from like four years ago, walk on, is unbelievable. It's yeah. I think it even the the story going further back of him not even playing high school volleyball, playing golf. Yeah, <laughs> and now he's what? Here, it's crazy. Yeah, I mean, 
you hear about all the early commitments that young people are forced to make to particular sports these days. And uh, there's been a lot of talk about that, about whether it's good or bad, but specialization is, is, a, is a fact for a lot of young people today. And he's the, the exact example of being a diverse athlete and how that can benefit you in the long run. And, uh, he, and, and because of that, he's still, his learning curve is still so high. I mean, he's, he's got so much room to grow and get stronger. And sometimes these 6'10 guys arrive and their physical – peak is years down the road. It just takes them a long time for a, for a long, lean body like that to put on the muscle mass to hit the ball at the velocity that we need to be hit here. And, and so I, I think his, his upside is still tremendous, and um, he's such a great guy, too. I mean, gosh, I mean, he's great to work with. I think he's got I, – I just love working with him every day. I, I think it'll be fun to have him in the gym over the next four years. John Spira, the head coach of the U.S. men's national volleyball team and the head coach of USA Volleyball with us on BYU Sports Nation. What is the biggest challenge for you and USA Volleyball as you try and make another push at that 2020 gold medal? Well, that's a good question. The biggest challenge is, uh, is the fact that the world is so good at our sport. Uh, the, the, the top 10 teams are all capable of beating one another. There's phenomenal athletes in lots and lots of countries around the world. It's, it's different overseas. A lot of the guys that leave from BYU and they start their professional career. They're not doing it in the United States like basketball, football, and baseball. They're, they're doing it in Europe and Asia and sometimes South America. And so it's, it is truly an international game. And for us to, to kind of – we always call it small margins. The margins are just so small between all the best teams. And so for us, it's about just getting better at about everything we do. I mean, and certainly at the next level, serving and passing continues to be – the real focus, the guys hit the serve really hard and they hit it in a lot and passing that ball is really important, but it's just bigger, stronger, faster at this level. And so we got to be bigger, stronger, and faster. How much better of a coach are you now that you have uh, Mike Wall and Rob Nielsen around you to uh, support you? <laughs> yeah. Listen, if uh, somebody could ever compliment my coaching by saying that I, I hire well, that's all I need to hear. And, <laughs> you know, I think you need to, the most important thing, I always say the number, the number one thing you've got to do is hire a good number two. And I've had uh, several great number twos. They're all kind of number twos here. You know, Rob and Mike and Matt Furbringer uh, is actually the first guy that I hired here. And, and him and his wife just got hired at Long Beach State Women's Volleyball yesterday. It was announced. So we'll be losing we'll be losing uh, Maddie, but uh, so I don't know. Maybe I got to go find another Cougar to fill a spot here on my roster. <laughs> there are a lot out uh, there, man. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know that they've had a tremendous impact on the sport. So yeah, we've had a great staff. I think it's been really, really a, a huge impact on the guys. I think the players here today are getting trained right, and they feel like they're getting taken care of. And I think the morale and the enthusiasm for for how things are being run here is really hot. How much trash talk exists between the guys on the team when it comes to the universities they play for? A little bit, but you'd be surprised. It kind of diminishes a little bit. I, and certainly, I'm not afraid of throwing out an SC jab every once in a while. <laughs> and so, but it's, uh, you know, it, there's a lot less of it than you might think. You know, sometimes around a football game, but it's usually via text messages because all the guys are overseas. So, uh, yeah. It's, it, the guys, they all, they're, we're all Americans in this deal. So they all, they all uh, gravitate toward that pretty quickly. BYU, uh, BYU's rivals Utah. They don't have men's volleyball, so it's typically been UCLA. And and my only issue with you, John, is that you've made UCLA likable <laughs> for me and BYU fans. I I want to hate UCLA, and I I cannot. Uh, no. Well, you know, I, I certainly understand the rivalry because for years and years. Uh, that we were two great programs. And I think back in the day, too, you had two iconic coaches who were very, very different people. Uh, you had Al Skates and Carl McGowan. And uh, they, they didn't really like each other very much because I think their personalities didn't jive. Um, and so you combine those two things, and it, it, it got heated over the years. Uh, but I, I think uh, certainly a lot of respect for me and uh, certainly all the Bruins that I know about what BYU has put together as a program and their body of work. And uh, I, I have, I had a great relationship with Carl. Uh, you know, I, I was able to get to know him, especially when I was assisting Hugh McCutcheon 
another Cougar uh, when I was with the uh, Olympic team in 2007 and 8. And uh, so I got to know him. We were even roommates there for a little bit. So I actually think if you, you, got, you really sat down and had a conversation about these two men who are, who are icons in our sport, they're actually way more similar than different. And that's probably why that rivalry was there. You know how that works. So, um, yeah, I, I think uh, I appreciate that, uh, you, you know, it's harder to uh, dislike UCLA. I, one of the reasons <laughs> I like UCLA, and I, I really feel that um, – I feel like the values of UCLA are me. I think UCLA is an institution that it's a public school. It's humble. There's a lot of real people there. There's no, there's very little elitism. There, there was actually uh, all these college rankings come out every once in a while, but UCLA has more lower and middle class socioeconomic status students than any university in America. And our ability to move people up the socioeconomic uh, ladder is, is number one in the country across all universities. And that, to me, was the best ranking stat I'd ever heard. Because I think UCLA, I think we are humble. We are real. We're, we're down to earth. And, and we, we have a blue collarness to us. And I think uh, – so I think we should be likable. <laughs> you know, I think – we're real people and we're working hard and we're just trying to be great volleyball players and, and great people. And, and I think there's a lot of similarities between that and the values of, of BYU. Well, and that ad paid for by UCLA alumni, John Spurra. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, and right. your rivalry too, blue greater than red, right? That's darn right. You got that right. Yeah. We don't want to be red. All right. Except All right. we're wearing red, white, and blue. It all <laughs> comes together. We'll finish with this, John. Uh, as the head coach of the Bruins, what do you expect the new look MPSF to be like in terms of competition? Seven teams now after the split, and then you add Grad Canyon and Concordia yeah. Irvine. It's very different. Yeah, it is very different. It's, I think it'll take a few years to kind of figure out how to schedule and what the, what that's going to look like for people at the field house and the teams that are coming in. Um, yeah, I think it's going to – you still have what has historically been – the stronger teams all together. So if you look at, you know, the last 10, 15 years and you look at the, the records and you total them up, I mean, certainly the Irvine and Long Beaches and Hawaii's have all been really good. And Northridge made a final four, I think 2010, like the big West schools that are leaving certainly contributed to the strength of what was the MPSF. But if you look at the whole historical record, SC, Stanford, UCLA, BYU, Pepperdine here, you're talking about, uh, some great, great volleyball programs who are going to continue to be great. And so I think the new look MPSF is still going to be strong. It's going to be great volleyball. The fans in the field house are going to be loving it and rocking it and uh, cheering against those Bruins when we come into town trying to help us miss some serves. So uh, I think it's, it's still going to be a great product, and uh, BYU fans will be really happy with, with the change. John Spira, the head coach of the U.S. men's national volleyball team with us on BYU Sports Nation. Coach, good luck. USA against France July 4th in Brazil. Enjoy Independence Day, we hope, with the win. And uh, yeah. say hello to all five of the BYU guys for us. I certainly will. Thanks again for having me.